Hey everybody, you know sometimes it really pays to experiment with how your print is sitting on the print bed to get the best detail out of it. When I was at the St. George board game convention, I made these little dice with my 3D printing professor logo on them to give away to people, but they didn't happen before the convention. I didn't even think about this before the convention. What happened was while I was there, one of the other vendors approached me and said, hey, how much does it cost to get a dice made? What he was asking was, how much would it cost for me to design his special dice with special icons on it and print them out? And I knew that I, I couldn't really beat the price of the guy who's got the laser cutter and, and does dice for a living. He's got it down. And so instead I decided to go the education route and I said, you know, you don't really need me to do this for you or even him. You can do it yourself. The software is there. It's in place and it's super easy to use. Here, here, let me show you. So I pulled up Tinkercad here and I said, yeah, this, this website, it's a super cool and, and easy to use uh, uh, piece of software. And all you have to do is create a new design. And then when that design comes up, throw a box onto the scene and, and, and maybe increase the radius of it a little bit, but not, not too much. You don't want your dice to be like super round, maybe, maybe two or three is about all that you need. And then you just start punching holes in it. You can take any shape like this and you can, you can turn it into a hole. And, uh, and then we can use the, uh, the work plane here uh, to make this easier. And we'll, uh, we'll put this hole here and maybe drop it down just a little bit because I like my holes to be nice and big and, and almost uh, uh, whimsically shaped. And then we'll duplicate it and we'll move it over here. Why are you giving me such a hard time? You're slow today. There we go. And uh, we'll grab those two and we'll duplicate them. And uh, we'll move them up here. And then you do this for the other four sides and, and uh, we can go around the whole dice doing this. Let me move the work plane to the top and start working on this. And, and he stopped me there and he said, yeah, but I want to do it for my own custom icons and logos I want to put my own stuff on there can you and and I've got the graphics but they're they're rasterized and they need to be vectorized so I need to pay somebody to turn them into vectors for this and I said no 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 you don't even need to do that see here's this program called Inkscape and and it's free and it's ready to go and you can see here here's my logo I've already brought it in uh, and we'll zoom in on it and show that it is in fact uh, there's a very high resolution but it's still raster uh, still little dots there, but then all you have to do is go up to object and uh, and fill. Uh, no, sorry, what is it? Path, trace, bitmap, <laughs> and uh, pull this up here. We can turn on a live preview. Good brightness cutoff. That's good. And then uh, and then we can go up here and we'll zoom in and see that this one is now all vector graphics. And then all we have to do is uh, delete the the raster graphics, obviously and file save as and save as an F svg but of course i don't need to do that because i already have my logo saved as an svg so instead i will just import it uh in in tinkercad i'll just uh pull it up right here where's my svg uh there it is logo stroke svg drop that right there uh import it and of course, Tinkercad has a thing where where the work plane is plane is doesn't actually affect the placement of this. But never mind, we'll make this work. We'll just shrink it down to the size that we want it, and we'll uh, put it where our dice is, and move it up, and shrink it around, and get it in there. And I made a little dice with my logo on it. And uh, after I was done showing him this, and he was like, "Oh, that's really cool, man. That 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 kind of works. I might be able to do this." Hey. How come, how come you're not printing these dice out and giving them away here at the board game convention? And I went, oh. <laughs> and so I continued from that point on to print these dice out and give them away at the board game convention. Now they weren't super legible. The way that I was printing them was the way that I was designing them. I was spur of the moment and had to throw this out there. And so I was printing them like this. The logo was printing on top and this was the way that it looked. Now, after the convention, 
I got to thinking, you know, that might not have been the most effective way. See, when you print it like this with the logo on top, the most detail you can get is that round nozzle that you got, which in my case was 0.4 millimeters wide, which is the pretty common nozzle size. But if I turned this so that the logo was printing going up, then all of a sudden I get 0.2 millimeter layer heights that kind of become part of the detail. Now, it's kind of like working with, uh, with square pixel or, or rectangular pixels instead of square ones, very rectangular pixels, because it's, it's all dependent on the layer height and I can go uh, 0.2 or 0.15 or 0.1, but I still have that 0.4 millimeter nozzle that's determining how wide I can be on that. And it's not really pixels at all. It's completely vectory, but still you can get more detail if you turn it sideways. So I did, I turned it sideways. And as you can see, the detail is slightly better on this one, but then just experimentally, because I don't know why, and I did not expect it to make any difference. I also printed one where the logo was standing up sideways. And this one turned out to be the best one of the whole group. Now, why is that? Because the letters, the professor letters at the bottom, which were the parts that were hard, hardest to read on all of them, because of those professor letters, because they're letters, they're tall and thin. And so turning them sideways so that they go with the grain of the print enabled me to make them so that they were more printable. In fact, there are spaces between each letter because I allowed the layers to fill in those spaces. So obviously the best way to print this dice is with the logo on its side, on the side of the print. I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't have just plain experimented, if I hadn't have tried different orientations for the sake of trying different orientations. And I'm still curious if maybe I'd get a better result this way than this way, but I suspect that this way, because we got the arch of the D and the arch of the P working with us on that one. And if I turn it this way, all of a sudden we got the long end of the P that we're working against. But even then, I don't think it would make that big of a difference. It was exciting to me to learn to just, just turn it a different way, try it a different way if you can. Obviously, not all prints this will work for, but for a dice, it worked incredibly well. And if I did do a dice with different icons on each side, I'd really have to try hard and maybe just, just try all six possible orientations and lay it down. Some people might even say, hey, why not be really brave and put it on its edge and print it that way and see what it does. Might need a little bit of support, or maybe I can I can make these edges so that they're flat instead of rounded, and maybe that would work with some excellent layer adhesion. And the results might be surprising. Heck, if I were really adventurous, I'd figure out a way to put it on its tip and print it up from there, but uh, I'm not quite that brave. Still, it, it was interesting me, to me. And I guess the lesson and the takeaway from this is don't, don't take anything for granted. If you can, experiment with it, try it out, see what happens. Have you ever done anything with 3D printing where you, you didn't think it would work, but yeah, you tried it anyways because it was going to be quick and easy and it surprised you? What lessons have you learned about? Share them in the comments so that we can all discuss them and learn together and maybe they'll make it into a future video. But as always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I want to thank my Patreon supporters, especially for supporting me and doing great things. Thank you guys very much. And if you'd like to get in, hey, there's still room on the Patreon supporter tiles. As always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.